Now, I've said this before, and I'm sure you trust me by now when I say this, that my guest needs absolutely no introduction because she is the Mona Lisa Chinda and she joins me on the show right now. I was just singing Lo J's, follow my command, <laughs> like zombie. Really, I feel like every time I hear that song, I do think about you, but then there's so much more to you than just your name. The fact that yeah. you are and you have been such a veteran in this industry. Yes. Now, you've got into a space where it's now just beyond the movies and people watching you on camera and your beautiful skin, if I might add, it still glows the <laughs> same you. way. <laughs> Thank you. So walk me through that evolution for you. At what point did you know I'm an actor and I have mastered this space? I want to do more. Well, um, very, very intelligent question. Um, it is my wanting to do more has always been there. I think, I think having to come into the limelight via Nollywood, via acting, even though I read theater arts, mm -hmm. I, 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 I am now beginning to see that that was probably a platform for me to pursue this passion of mine. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So having read, having come, coming from the background of theater, mm -hmm. I wanted to use that space to advocate, to to create initiative for, you know, for for young people, as it as it were. So it has always been there, present, but it was just dormant. Mm -hmm. So now, with age, with experiences, it's time to move with it. It's time to move with it. That's and right. in terms of moving with it, I find that women are such a passionate cause for you. Mm -hmm. Talk exactly. to me about and that. Girls. And women and girls, females, yes. women and girls. What, 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 why is that? What is it about that story that, because everyone has a story, mm -hmm. I would always say this. That's right. But for you, you're very particular about it, especially when you had your talk show. Mm -hmm. I believe it's coming back soon, yes, is it? Yes, it's season six, yes. Exactly. We're working so, on it, yeah. What is it about women and girls for you that, you know, really stands out in terms of resonating with your story? Uh, that's like taking me back to, you know, back. <laughs> to the past. So I, I, uh, it's very sensitive. I'm so, sorry. so yeah, so, um, I was in an abused relationship at some point, do you get? So, um, that also formed, um, I, I, I asked myself if I could be everything for this particular person. How about other women who really don't have what to hang on to? How about you know women who will be in an abusive relationship and not know what to do? Not don't have a job, don't have any you know anything to you know hold on to. So I just thought I should put myself in their shoes and see how I I can um, step away from being me and being them and see how I can you know if it means just talking about it, if it means you know, speaking to each, any one of them to heal, because I had to heal myself. So I'm coming from that background, apart from my creative, creative background. ability, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm coming from that background where women and girls need to be given the space to live their life, to be the best version of themselves, because we have a lot to offer, we, other than just being uh, relegated to the background in, in, in the name of marriage and all sorts of things. So I just, you know, that's probably, I'm, I might not put it right at this point, time but that is has been always my passion for girls for women for young people generally it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be the gender you know but for young people so yeah this has always been inherent you know I'm happy you said that because with I mean my family my mom's a single mom and she would always talk about healing as part of the things that helped yeah. her really move forward yes but I find that with healing while it, it's easy to, like it's not easy but you can talk about you know healing as an individual mm -hmm. but then transferring that to another person, I always find that there's a struggle there because most people, it's, it's not like, while well, I would love for healing to be like an energy that I could hold on to you and mm -hmm. say, you know what, I'm, I, I healed mm -hmm. and I want you to heal as well. But I find that it's not always the case. So when you deal with these women, when you deal with these young girls who I am very aware all have tremendous stories, mm -hmm. how do you pass on that healing? How do you make sure that you're able to get them to that point, or is that even your responsibility? Love, love is a language, sweetie. Love is a language, and I, I have so much to give. Oh. So I have, um, I can't give what I don't have. Yes. So love conquers everything. Love is the only language that I know. I speak it right from, anybody who knows me knows that I talk about love, I talk about everything that just surrounds it, everything that has anything to do with love, and that has, that has always been my, my escape route, do you, do you know? So yeah. yeah, so that's what I give. 
and it's difficult for them to come out from whatever hole they found themselves in. It is, but constant um, uh, um, therapy. I mean, therapy can come from just speaking to them, speaking to a whole lot of crowd, counseling, because I do a lot of counseling as well, even though that has not come out in limelight, but I do that in the background. <laughs> I do a lot. <laughs> I have a whole body of work. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, that's it. You know, I'm happy you talked about counseling because now I want to ask you a question. Don't worry. It's not going to be a crazy one. But it's a question that it's, it's, it's happening. Mm -hmm. There are lots of present cases, right? Mm -hmm. uh, cases of we have a problem as a couple and you don't get to see your kids because wow. we have a problem. Now, this is not an isolated incident. It's happening to celebrities. It's happening to the average yeah, man. Mm -hmm. There are cases where mother, mom and dad are having arguments, but then the kids are in the middle, and mom says, you know what, you can't see the kids, or the kids are somehow just caught in the middle. What's your take on that? Oh, very difficult. Now, um, it would depend on the, on the, on the couple, really. Mm -hmm. It's at the end of the day, it goes back to the couple. Um, do they want to see, do they want the children to grow, seeing what, you know, that's being exchanged, the energy being exchanged between couples who are not happy together, who are always, you know, um, arguing and fighting and, and, you know, having all those squabbles in front of children. Now, if one person wants to be mature and reasonable, will probably want to excuse herself, himself, and not have those kind of bouts of arguments in front of children. Now, if both of them want to be mad at the same time, that's another story. That's another, you know, a complicated issue. But if one person can just be that stupid person to just say, you know, shut it. I don't want these kids to see what I and my spouse were going through or whatever. I think that would probably, you know, assuage the fears or the growth of these children. So for me, I will say let one person just chill and swallow all the insult and just move away from for that get out of the heat for that moment and you know take all that in and then probably come back or talk about it later but certainly not in front of the children yeah no not not in front of the children i like that you said that now you were in the midst of a lot of them when you went to university of abuja that's right like i rightly said it was all over social media. Mm -hmm. I saw the dancing, I saw the singing. What was the mm -hmm. best part of, I mean, I know you gave out, what, a million to 10 mm -hmm. people for her, your, the most recent um, yeah, event for, that yeah, you had. the counter hand event. The counter yeah. event, exactly. Yes. You gave about a million to 10 people. What was the best part of that entire experience? Some people will think is the money part, but I wanted to ask you, what was it for you? For me, um, it was the fact that just putting smiles on people's faces for me. Now, there was one particular one that got everybody really uh, emotional. Now, there's this security lady who registered just that money. I think she's a security guard for that hotel. Okay. So she saw what was happening and said, okay, let me just register and just try my luck and all of that. And then when she, when she was selected, she was selected and then she gave her own testimony. Testimony of how she struggled, how she's a widow, her husband died, how they took everything from her, how she struggled with the children. It was quite emotional. And she has a salon, she has a job apart from the security. So she's a mother who probably putting her hands in everywhere just to keep the family going. Mm -hmm. So when she sold her story that she has a salon, she just would want this, she pitched her job and wanted this money, would do this for her, do that for her. Do that. I am not one. Of, I'm not the panelist. I'm not, I don't. I, I wasn't part of the. I'm selection. sure if you were, you would have loved to give everyone. <laughs> I'm telling you. So when she was called, that she won the money, it wasn't about the money. It was the fact that she was heard. It was the fact that when she spoke, it touches resonated with a lot of people there. So it wasn't about the money. And then I was actually talking to my guests here, and then somebody grabbed my feet. I was crying. I was. I said, Oh my God, what's happening? You know. So. I, you know, goosebumps and all of that. I was so emotional. Even my guests, would, you know, they were close to tears and all of that. So for me, that was a high. It wasn't about the money. For most of the contests, of course, some of them, of course, <laughs> for the money. <laughs> but quite a chunk of them came for their experience. Is this happening again? Yes, it's annual. Has to be. Yes, has it's to annual, be. The so joy is unimaginable, quite honestly. Yes, it was. Are you acting again? I am acting, but on what know. level now? On a, you know and what? The, let's just the, do it because you know, or on a, let's get back in there. Yes, but I'm more behind the scenes. Okay. I do my own movies now, even mm -hmm. though I'm still open to you know work for other people. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I do my own more behind the scenes. At some point, you have to start, you know, diversifying and doing I other agree. things. Yes. I think there's a lot happening around you, and I'm just yeah. thinking 
this is pure joy. When I see the way you speak about the foundation mm -hmm. and the things you do for these women, I think that it's safe to say this is you finding that mm -hmm. purpose and that calling and that space you're meant to be that's in, and right. this is where you're thriving in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's it. And um, I want to put, you know, on a, on a, on a, not on a final note, but someday, someday I need you to also um, to listen to. There's something I call, I'm very big on self-preservation. Mm. Now, um, for those women and girls who attended the event, they were more, more abused in some ways. You know, it could be, it might not just be their relationship or whatever, it could be any, any, any you know, um, circumstances in which they found, find, find themselves in. So, you know, when we had the panelists speak to them, you could see that they were paying rapt attention. You know, some of these people need mentoring. You know, they don't, probably don't know where, or they're anxious. So that space that day opened a lot. It was a big, you know, it was big for everybody. I mean, for those young people who came and listened to the panelists talking and, and mentoring them, whichever thing they could grab there was just what, for them, it was everything. Mm -hmm. So you need to hear them speak. You need to, because we've got, we've got some uh, footages from them, the experiences and all of them. For me, it's, just, it's everything. It wasn't about, it wasn't about the finances <laughs> for, for them. But speaking yeah. of self-reservation, yeah. mental health within this industry is so important, right? How have you, able to, how have, how have you been able to keep yours sane? Because you like you said, you can't give what you don't have. And we are in a very intense industry that is entertainment. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. Focusing on the entertainment side, mm -hmm. the Mona Lisa Chenda that everybody knows and everybody sees and has a huge fan base. How do you take all of that and still give from yourself? So catering to both the entertainer and now the foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's me. There's, the, there's a creative side of me that there's the, uh, the other side of me, which is um, responsibility and accountability and all of that. So it's just, I don't know how I do it. I honestly can't, I can't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I can't answer that question, but I don't know how I do, but it, it just turns out well for me and it I does. don't regret anything whatsoever. I'm grateful yeah. for that. Melissa Chinda, this has been amazing. I'm so happy Thank to wrap so up the much. show with you. Thank now you. there's a thing I will do where I would say, oh well, if that's all of us from here, in Abuja, but I'm going to let you do the honors and say thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching.